GeezerViz. Hello, my name is Mike and welcome to GeezerViz. For those of you that are new to this station, this channel is about my wife Barbara and I as we travel around the country in our motorhome. Today, we're going to talk about full-timing versus part-timing. So let's talk a little bit about full-timing. My wife Barbara and I travel in our motorhome. We moved in in October 2018 <clears throat> and then we hit the road in January 2019. And we spent a few months on the road as our first trip and traveled the southwest mainly. That's in season one of Geezer Viz. And then uh, came home for the summer. Our plan was to live in the motorhome for the summer, take season two on the road, and come back again for the summer in the Pacific Northwest because, hey, this is a beautiful place in the summertime. And while we were here, we decided, you know, we really do want a house and uh, we were going to buy one eventually anyway because even though you are full-timing you're probably not going to full-time for the rest of your life and uh, and so you need an exit strategy for when full-timing is no longer an opportunity and so uh, that's what we did is we decided to buy the house now rather than wait so uh, right behind me here you will see the house so we purchased this house out here and uh, today is a beautiful day out here in the northwest and you can see that it's right on some water and we have beautiful views so it was just made sense for us to go ahead and buy the house so I guess now I can't really say that I'm full-timing anymore um, because I'm living in a house too in addition to traveling in the motorhome when I talk about full-time RV living uh, there's different definitions that people use for that. But for me, full-time RV living means you're in your motorhome, that's your primary residence, and you're actually traveling in it. Uh, some people have um, RVs that they park in their mom's backyard and they live in it. To me, that's not full-time RV living. That's just living in your mom's backyard. Um, but it's those folks that have an RV, that use it, that travel in it, to me, that is full-time RV living. You can stay in one spot for a long time, uh, but that is your primary residence. So that's good to do that, and it's fun to do that, but it's not always an option for the rest of your life. There's gonna come a time when you're a little bit older and maybe driving around isn't what you wanna do anymore. When I think of part-time living, that's more the snowbird. Um, the, the snowbird mentality where you go someplace and you usually do that during the winter months you head towards the sunny weather and then come home for the summer months that's for the people who live in the north i suppose there's reverse snowbird birders that live in the south when it gets too hot in the south they head north so uh but i still think in order to be considered an rver you need to travel around um, I know there's snowbirders that just go to the same location year after year after year. And we're going to go back to Parker, Arizona, but that's not going to be something we're going to do all the time. Uh, how boring. There is so many places in this great country to see. And you really want to get in your vehicle, see those things, and take do those activities. And that's what this channel is all about, right? So it's going around and visiting the different places and seeing sites that I haven't been able to see when I was working because time was short. Well, I'm retired now, so time's not short. So now's the time to get out there and really go see and do all these things that I've wanted to do basically my whole life. So it's time to get season two on the road. We started off in Roatan, great time there. Uh, that was just a nice little vacation from retirement. No, that's not a vacation from retirement. That's a vacation from what we are normally doing, I guess. So that was a vacation uh, to go to a nice warm sunny spot and play on the beach. So now we're going to head out and head across the country. This season is going to take us uh, across the north, uh, the northern states. We are going to go to the Spartan factory and we're going to see uh, how the chassis are made and take a class there on how to maintain the chassis. It's going to take us to the factory where the Integra was built. So we'll get a look at that and then we're going to head south and uh, we're gonna start trying to chase the good weather again 
we had a hard time in season one finding good weather. Uh, maybe this time we'll be more lucky. We're going to head down from Indiana down to Alabama, then across the bottom of the country, end up back in Parker, and then I have no idea what we're doing from there, but I'm sure it's going to be fun. So let's get ready and go. Come on, let's head out. Let's hit the road. Hit the road, Jack. Here we go. You know, even here in a little town of Ocean Shores, there's still a lot of things to do for fun things, for people to keep them busy. They have a little go-karts, they have a putt-putt golf course, they have lots of shopping. So the girls went off shopping and uh, George and I, we decided to head on in here to the Elkhead Tap Room. Check it out. It's a fun little place, you know, and you got to come in, buy the beer, and then you got to get the shirt. So, yep, got the beer, got the shirt, good to go. Once you no longer full-time RV and you find your forever home, you need to make sure it's in a place where you're going to really enjoy. So, summertime here in Washington State, yeah, it's a good time to come down here to the beach. This place is within two minutes uh, of my house that I just bought. And so, it's really nice to come down here in the summertime. Uh, and it's good to get away during the winter time as well. And actually, we like it down here uh, in the summertime. It's busy now. This is certainly not a California or Florida beach, that's for sure. We're out here in the Pacific Northwest. People are still bundled up. The water's freezing cold. You don't really want to go swimming out there. However, there are other activities. I'm going to swing the camera around here so you can see some of what's going on down here. So there you go. You can see that they've got some of the the surf or flyboarding. I don't know what it is called. Kiteboarding. So I got some of that going on. And then there's always kite flying down here as well. So this is about as crowded as the beach gets down here. Uh, fine by me. Not too crowded. Little kids are out in the water. Grown-ups, not so much and uh, I'll probably pretty much stay here on land too. But it's a good place to walk down here with the dogs. So that's what we're gonna do. Uh, maybe I'll do some kite flying later. And if you ever get tired just flying kites and hanging around down here on the beach, you can always build a fort. Check it out. Then of course, if you want to stay in your RV and want to continue to full time in your RV, you can still come down here and have beautiful beach access.
Good morning, campers. Well, today, season two is finally here. I mean, we did start in Roatan, which was a lot of fun, uh, a good place to vacation and go scuba diving and just relax in the sun and the sand. But today, we're back in the motorhome. Today's a travel day. So today, we're going to head out and we're going to leave here in beautiful Yelm, Washington. And we're going to head out and go down to a place near Bend, Oregon. It's going to be a long drive down to Bend, Oregon today. We are going to stop and get gas and probably have to stop and eat lunch along the way. Probably about a seven hour drive. And then we're going to just jam down to Las Vegas as quickly as we can get and get a new front tire safety device installed in the coach. And I'll talk more about the retro band uh, once we get to Vegas. So let's hit the road. Well, we're spending our first night here at Cascade Meadows RV Resort. This place is just outside of Bend, Oregon. And really, if you can see behind me, it's a wide open field. And so, satellite reception is good. Um, there's not a lot of privacy in between the coaches, but they're well spaced apart. Um, we're just here for the night. Uh, this is a membership park, so it cost us $10 for the night. Uh, plus you have to pay a $5 utility fee, so $15 for the night. Um, one of the reasons we have the membership, so it works out really well. There's a swimming pool here. Uh, I think there's a hot tub. We didn't take advantage of it because we're only here for the night. And then, um, and then we're off uh, to a Walmart tonight. So we're just trying to get down to Vegas as quickly as we can. Cascade Meadows, nice place. Definitely worth $15 a night. Uh, full hookups, uh, I would stay here again for sure. They also have this little area where you can hang out and just relax and it's right next to the pool area. In these membership parks there's always uh, activities going on so you can always find something to do. They also have uh, something they call horse racing where you pay 25 cents per horse and then I guess winner takes all. Looks like they have 110 sites here. And all the other activities, shuffleboard, pickleball. Good morning. Well, we've made it to Winnie Mucca, Nevada. So about another seven hours and we'll be in Vegas. And uh, we are here at the beautiful camping spot. Uh, there you go, Walmart. Uh, it's uh, one of the spots that does allow camping here. And you can see that there's a number of rigs uh, around me as well. <clears throat> there's signs that say no overnight camping um, or no overnight parking, I guess. It's not camping, we're parking. Uh, we did put the slides out. Really, that's a not good etiquette to do that, but we needed the space to move around in there. And so we found a little spot that allows us to do that. Driving down here, it was uh, really interesting. We went up around Mount Hood, <coughs> and it was uh, beautiful up there, uh, going in and out of forest and uh, national, uh, national parks. And then, uh, not national parks, but national forests. And then coming down the back side, it really got dry and arid and lots of sagebrush and then as it even got lower it turned into farmland and so uh, it was really interesting uh, the further you drove how the different uh, topography changed and then once we uh, once we got out of the national forest it was flat and there was nothing around there must have been 200 miles that we drove before we even saw a house it's uh, a wide open country out here and 
in uh, northern Nevada and southern Oregon. So, here we go. About seven hours to Vegas. Heading out. <laughs> All right, look at me. Losers. 